against. I do want to, uh, I do want to uh, acknowledge uh, Charlie Jo here. She could not receive First Holy Communion with us last week, but she's going to receive her First Holy Communion today. Do you want to stand up? No? <laughs> Too much better? No? Okay, okay, okay. But listen, this whole community supports you. We love you, and I hope this is the best day of your life, okay? Yes? Welcome. At a funeral a few years back, the family wanted me to share something the deceased man wrote. His name was Dennis, and I would like to begin my homily with his words because it gives me a perfect start to reflect on the Trinity. This is what he said. It is good to slow down and see the beauty in life. I don't think most people ever do. There is truly something sacred in everything in life. And only the quiet mind can see the beauty and try not to capture it, contain it, put it into words, ideas, theories, Man is surrounded in love, but can never slow down enough to see the beauty. If he did, he would never kill again, nor would destroy the planet with his greed. Beauty, love, the sacred, can never be contained by man's attempt to seek it, it can only come to the person who can receive it quietly, effortlessly, simply. For the self can never contain that which is immeasurable, the sacred. Today we celebrate the feast of the Most Holy Trinity. The Trinity is often called mystery. But Dennis made me think, should every mystery have to be unraveled? Should it be? I agree with Dennis that perhaps there are some things which we should only, of which we should only see the beauty and not try to capture it, contain it, put it into words, ideas, theories. For the self, he says, can never contain that which is immeasurable, the sacred. So today, instead of talking about the Trinity as mystery, I would like to talk about the Trinity simply as beauty. Trinity is beauty. So in my three points, that's going to be my focus. First, let's talk about Trinity as beauty. A couple of weeks back, in another homily, I had shared the story of a little boy who asked Pope Francis what God did before he created the world. I know I was not here for this Mass, so you didn't hear that homily, but two weeks back, I began my homily with this story about Pope Francis telling the congregation at the World Festival of Families in 2015 when he came to the United States, what did God do when God, before God created the world? And Pope Francis said he was kind of taken aback with this question, but after a few moments of silence, he said to the boy, before God created the world, God loved. Because God is love. But then Pope Francis went on to say, he says, this may not sound very theological, and it's very theological, but he was being humble, I think. He said, this may not sound very theological, but you will understand, he told the people, he told the crowd. 
He says, this love between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit was so overflowing, so big, that it could not be contained. The word the translator used as Pope Francis spoke in Spanish was, he, God could not be egoistic, could not keep it for himself. It had to be poured out so as to share that love with those out of himself. And then God created the world. So before God created the world, God loved but this love is so overflowing, and it's as it, as it were, creation takes, creation takes shape out of the outpouring love of God. And this is why I want to reflect on the Trinity as beauty. Because the beauty of nature, the grandeur of creation, the vastness of the universe, the myriads of colors, the range of melodies, the variety of creatures, and the diversity of humanity, of the human race, is a reflection, it's a mere reflection of the love of the, of, of the, love of the God we call Trinity. I guess what I'm saying is, if creation, which reflects the Trinity, is so beautiful, how much more beautiful must be the Trinity and the love that exists between the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit? Trinity is beauty. So in my next two points, I want to further build on Pope Francis's thought on the Trinity in relation to creation and discover its beauty. And I'm gonna rely heavily on an encyclical that Pope Francis wrote, Laudato Si, for this. And towards the end of the encyclical, Pope Francis draws a very beautiful link between Trinity and creation. And I think if we understand this, I think we will look at life itself differently. And I think that'll help us to understand the Trinity. So first of all, beauty distorted. This is my second point. Pope Francis says that before the fall, before the sin, human beings were able to see how the Trinity was imprinted on every created thing and being. In other words, we were able to see differently before the fall. Each creature bears in itself a specifically Trinitarian structure, so real that it could be readily, readily contemplated if only the human gaze were not so partial, dark, and fragile. In other words, creation is intrinsically Trinitarian, but sin has affected our ability to see it. So Pope Francis says then that our challenge today is to read all reality in a Trinitarian key. You know, sometimes you, you enter into a space and you begin to understand the space. You look at the people that are present and you say, okay, this is what this looks like. In other words, you're interpreting reality through a certain lens that you see. And Pope Francis is saying that our challenge is to see all of creation through the lens of the Trinity. In other words, we have to train us again, train ourselves again to see, to hear, and experience the Trinitarian Im imprint on creation. We have to train ourselves to see beauty again in all of creation, in all of God's creatures, and in all of the human race. We end up destroying creation because we don't see it as bearing the imprint of the Trinity. We end up hurting God's creatures because we do not see them as an expression of God's beauty. We end up exploiting human beings, seeing some races inferior to ours, hating and killing other human beings because we don't see in them the beauty of the Trinitarian image. You know, Dennis said in that little thing that he wrote, man is surrounded in love but can never slow down enough to see the beauty. If he did, he would never kill again. 
nor would he destroy the planet with greed. See how distorted our vision has gotten that we kill a fellow human being and we don't see the image of the Trinitarian God on the person. So how can we repair our distorted vision? How can we undo the damage? This is my third point. Pope Francis's answer to the question that I raise is that we imitate the relationship that exists between the persons of the Trinity. What did God do before God created the world? God loved. So now we are being invited to see differently, to imitate the relationship that exists between the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, which is love. Pope Francis calls it a subsistent relationship or a relationship that continues to exist even till today. This means that the world created according to the divine model is a web of relationships. So I would like to read a rather long extract from Laudato Si to make this clear and just see if this, there's so much wisdom in this, but hear what Pope Francis is saying about the Trinity and creation. He said, creatures and human beings tend toward God, right? This is why we are here in church on, 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 on a Sunday morning. We could be doing so many other things. Why are we here? Because we naturally tend towards God. And in turn, it is proper for every living being to tend towards other things so that throughout the universe, we can find any number of constant and secretly interwoven relationships. So even this worship, even though we've come to worship God, it's also about our relationship with one another, isn't it? So Pope Francis says, this leads us not only to marvel at the manifold connections existing among creatures, but the human person grows more, matures more, and is sanctified more to the extent that he or she enters into relationships going out from themselves to live in communion with God with others, and with all creatures. So if God's love was so outpouring that creation came into existence, we are now being asked to go out of ourselves in communion with God, with others, and with all creatures. In this way, they make their own Trinitarian dynamism which God imprinted in them when they were created. So what is... And what exists in eternity, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, if we see right, we would be creating the same structure here among us. So beautiful. Everything is interconnected. And this invites us to develop a spirituality of that global solidarity which flows from the mystery of the Trinity. There is a war going on in Ukraine. What does that mean for us? A lot. There's a war in Gaza. What's, what, what does that mean for us? A lot. There's something happening in Sudan. What does that mean for us? A lot. Why? Because we are all interconnected. And the more we see ourselves as a web of interconnected relationships, the more we begin to live the life of the Trinity. Folks, this is my conclusion. This is my conclusion if I go to the altar. The Trinity is a mystery before anything else, but... It is the beauty of the love between the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit on all of creation and the web of the relationship it creates. So to restore our vision and see the imprint of the Trinity on call creation, we must see connectedness. And this happens at the Eucharist very often. We come to the Mass and we come for ourselves and we go back. We have done, we had more, no, made no contact with the community. And that is the end. This is, I won't, don't, don't want to call it the anti Trinitarian, but that's not Trinitarian, right? To restore our vision and see the imprint of the Trinity on all creation, we must see our connectedness. 
to God, to creation, and to all of humanity. To undo the damage of sin, we must rediscover Trinity as beauty. And the beauty of creation as the imprint of the most holy Trinity upon us. As Dennis says in that little poem he wrote, it is, the, it is good to slow down and see the beauty in life. Let me bring us to the table here. At the offertory during the Eucharist, we'll, go to, we'll bring bread and wine. The prayer the priest says is, blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. You wonder why the, 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 the wisdom of the church calls God the God of all creation. I think we understand today, right? Because the imprint of God is in all creation. The bread and wine represent all of creation and the work of human hands. The Father sends the Holy Spirit to transform the bread and wine into the body and blood of Christ. So the Eucharist, as it were, a Trinitarian recreation. Every Eucharist, you can say, is a recreation. It's a Trinitarian recreation. The creation is brought here to the altar and God recreates it by sending the Holy Spirit. So as we receive the body and blood of Christ today, I pray that we may begin to see the Trinitarian imprint on all creation, in all creatures, and in all of humanity, every single human person. I'm saying, let us rediscover the Trinity as beauty. People of God said.